In this video, I want to talk to you about the Frechet inception distance, which is a measure that is very popular in the image generation domain, and the purpose of this measure is to help us quantitatively understand to what extent an image that is generated is seemingly realistic. Consider that you have a black box image generator, which could be a GAN or a generative adversarial network, or it could be a model based on diffusion, and through that you will generate a bunch of synthetic images. Through the use of these image generators, you will be able to generate a set of synthetic images. Let's call it IS. And let's say you also have a set of real images, which could be IR1 all the way to the end. And the ultimate goal, colloquially, is to kind of evaluate how well these images are generated in the synthetic set and how realistic they seem to a human inspector. Firstly, let's talk about the Frechet distance. Note that FID or Fresche inception distance comes from the combination of the Fresche distance and the inception score inception model from Google. And we want to go over the multiple components, basically these two components, and see how they come together in order to form this distance that we are going to use to evaluate the efficacy of synthetic image generators. The Fresche distance was introduced by René Maurice Fresche, who was a French mathematician. To intuitively understand this concept, consider two curved paths that are finite, such as this. Let's say a person is walking his dog and the person is going and traversing this path in this order and the dog is traversing this path. Note that the ordering here matters, therefore they cannot walk backwards, however they have to go from start to finish and at the same time the distance could vary given that for example this curve is longer than this one. Also note that their speed does not have to be constant so they can vary their speed throughout this path. Now, Fresche distance has to do with the traversal between these two curves and has to do with the shortest leash length that is sufficient for both of them to traverse these two separate curved paths from start to finish. I'm going to use the notation of the Wikipedia for going over this concept. Let's say S is a metric space. Therefore, a curve A in this metric space is going to be a continuous map from D01 to S. You can have a reparameterization alpha that basically takes this 0 and 1, and through a non-decreasing surjection, it would bring it to 0 and 1. Note that this reparameterization is the main thing that is going to be used in order to kind of move between these two paths, basically preserve the order, and at the same time allow the uh, different varying speeds to be taken into account while considering the output that you want to generate, basically the Frechet distance. Thus, if you have curves A and B, you will have the Fréchet distance between A and B to be defined as such. So, the first thing you would need is this. Consider you have two reparameterizations of that. So you will have A reparameterization alpha and B reparameterization beta. We noted that D is a metric space, therefore there is an associated distance with it, so that is the D here. And alpha and beta are these reparameterization of 0 and 1. And you have the curve alpha, sorry, the curve A and the curve B parameterized by these. Now, taking this T into account, you want the maximum value that this will give you between 0 and 1. So consider if A is this path, B is this path. At T equals 0, let's say the dog is here and the person is here. And at t equal 1, given that you have a, a non-decreasing surjection from 0 and 1, the person is going to be here at t equal 1, and the dog is going to be here at t equal 1, and they cannot go backwards, so they have gone over the entirety of the path. So for any t in here, there is going to be a distance between where, for example, the dog is at the time t between 0 and 1, and where the person is for the same t between 0 and 1. And then this distance here is going to be a line and the length of that is going to be the basically the length of the leash so in order to find a leash length that is going to work for this path you have to be at least the same size as the maximum uh, of this distance between them on t between 0 and 1. Now so far we have a custom reparameterization again note that this reparameterizations with which are the non-decreasing surjections from 0 and 1 indicate basically the change of speed for a person and a dog going through these paths. Now what we are interested in in the Frechet inception distance, sorry, in the Frechet distance is to find the shortest length that 
basically would allow the person and the dog to control their speed in however they however way they want in order to be able to traverse these two curves. Therefore, we are interested in finding the reparameterization alpha and beta that leads to this minimum required leash length. Therefore, you would put this infimum here as well. Thus, again, looking at this reparameterization in alpha and beta, you're looking at a way of walking these two paths such that the maximum distance or the leash length is minimized. Now, the second part of the FID has to do with the inception model, or inception version three, which is introduced in this paper from 2014, going deeper with convolutions from Google. And it is the main building block in the FID. So there is a inception model version four as well. However, it's the inception model version three, which is more popular in basically computing FIDs. In particular, if you're interested in learning more about inception v3, then there is this guide from Google that I really recommend that goes to a lot of advanced details on inception version three. Noting that inception version three is actually coming from this incremental modification of the inception model from this article. And here's the block diagram representation of inception version three, which takes an input image and brings it to this. To compute the Fleche inception distance, uh, the Gaussian modeling will be used. So you will have multivariate Gaussian models. Let's say you take a synthetic image, let's say I1, you pass this to the inception version, inception version three, and then after pulling, let's say you get a 20, 48 dimensional vector. So you will have a feature vector F1 for this. And then going over these different feature vectors for the synthetic images, you will have this mu, uh, which signifies their basically average or mean. And you also have the covariance matrix, let's say sigma s. Now here's how you define the FID. So you want to compute this FID between the synthetic images and the uh, real images, and you basically want to consider a distribution to distribution distance. So you will have the mu of S minus mu of the real images, and you take the L2 norm of this vector here. So this signifies to what extent, let's say, the average of these two distributions is different from each other. Next, you want to consider a measure that signifies to what extent their spread is different from each other. So in a single dimensional situation, consider that you have, let's say, standard deviation sigma 1 and standard deviation sigma 2. You're interested in something like this, which if you think about it would be this plus this minus something like this. So here, in order to have the matrix equivalent of that, you will add this term, which is the trace of this matrix. And this matrix is sigma of s or the covariance matrix of the synthetic images plus the covariance matrix resulting from the real images minus two times the square root of these two. And this measures to what extent their spread is different. Now it is obvious from this definition and given that there is a notion of distance in the FID that the lower values for FID correspond to the better quality images being generated via whatever synthetic image generator you have been using. Note that the main idea is that once you're passing this low level representation of an entity, which is this image, through this long and deep network, as you're going through these different layers, you are capturing more high level information. And then once you get to this 2048 dimensional uh, representation, which can be aggregated afterwards, that is going to encompass a lot of semantic information, lines, edges, objects, and things like that. So this features are going to create a basically semantically efficient representation of whatever that entity that you were, you know, capturing this information in that image was. So this would basically help you to use this Gaussian modeling, use this distance effectively in a metric space that would help you better understand to what extent you can quantify how real the synthetically, basically these synthetic images are. Now, FID was introduced by this paper titled GANS trained by a two time scale update rule converged to a local Nash equilibrium, which was published in January of 2018. And in this paper, they introduced the Fresh inception distance or FID, which was a better measure compared to inception score for evaluating uh, synthetic image generation. 
Now that we have talked about FID, it's also noteworthy to go a little bit over the concept of inception score, which was a famous way of evaluating the efficacy of uh, generative adversarial networks in generating images. Note that it is not basically constraining us to just stick to the GANs because it has it's basically another general framework for evaluating the synthetic images. Now, inception score is mainly concerned with two concepts, the concept of diversity, meaning that the images that are generated have to be diverse and they cannot be, for example, degenerate into one single type of generated image. And then the concept of fidelity, meaning that the images are semantically recognizable to a human being and clearly belong to one of the classes. Now let's talk about the way this score is actually computed. And I'm going to use the notation of the Wikipedia just for consistency. Let's say you have the space of images the omega of x and you also have the space of labels let's say omega of y now you're sampling this images x or these synthetic images from a probability distribution of this generator now this probability distribution is defined over the space of synthetic or over the space of images or omega of x now you also have the set of all possible probability distributions over the space of labels let's call it m of omega y and you also have a discriminator, let's say you're considering the GAN setup, in which you're taking an image from this space and you map it to a probability distribution that identifies to what label it most probably belongs. Nonetheless, it's just going to give you a distribution over the possible labels according, basically conditioned on that given image. Now, the definition of the inception score is like this. Given an image X, by feeding it to the discriminator model, which is going to provide you with a distribution over the space of labels, you are going to get this conditional distribution over the space of labels given this instance x. Now, you also have another option. You also have the marginal computation for each one of these generated images, which means that you take this probability distribution and you keep sampling images from, let's say, this image generator. And now if you compute this integration, you will get essentially the probability of the, basically the marginal for each one of those labels. So you will have this as well. And this gives you another probability distribution over the space of labels, which in some sense, if you try to kind of understand and measure of distance between these two distributions, so you have this one and this one, as a measure of quality, you want to measure to what extent having a basically image X changes the probability distribution over the space of labels compared to a generic case where you're just going over everything and computing the marginal probabilities for each one of those classes. And therefore, it signifies to what extent the generated image X has semantic information that leads the discriminator to kind of differentiate between the different classes in the space of labels. Now, in order to do that, you use KL divergence. So the way you do it is that you take these probability distribution and this probability distribution. Let me use a different color here. You take these two and you compute the KL divergence as a measure of basically dissimilarity between two um, probability distributions. And you want to compute the expectation of this over the synthetic images. And then once you have this value, you also use exp on that. And this gives you the inception score uh, of this model. Here is another different way, which is interesting to look at the inception score. Look at this, you have this notion, the expected value by sampling x from the generator of the probability distribution over the space of uh, labels. Now, if you have this, there's going to be a probability distribution over the space of labels. And then if you take the entropy of this, and if you subtract the expected entropy of a, you know, a space of labels for one, let's say for each one of these individual um, synthetic images, if you subtract these two, which is kind of a subtraction of the macro and micro kind of um, 
probability distribution. This is going to also give you the inception score. And let's go over this again. So here, you take one synthetic image X, you take the distribution of the labels that it gives you. So if images are good, you expect the inception model, which is a good model, pre-trained model, to give you a low entropy representation. So this is going to be something small. And then this has to be something kind of uniform because you're going over everything. So this entropy is going to be higher, this entropy is going to be lower. Therefore, for a good model, you expect the inception score to be high. Now, we want to see why this, is equival this formula is equivalent to the formula that we just discussed. Now, let's go over this. For the first one, use the formula of the entropy and then bring this one out. Now, once you bring this one out, you take this formula right here and you have this times ln of this. Of course, you have to do another integration as well, which I have omitted from here. And then for this part, you have these, uh, this expected value of x from the space of pgen, from the distribution of pgen. And then you have this internal formula. Again, I forgot to add one integration here, which I'll fix it in the uh, next formula. So let's go over this part. So if you open up this part, you have to pre this uh, for the discriminator. And now because of this expected value, you add this pgen of x and dx, and you have the integration. So you have this component here. And then for this ln, again, you have the same thing because again, you have this expectation, you want to open it up. And then for this expectation right here for the second term, again, we are just looking at the individual terms here. You open this up and what this will give you is that you have another p gen x here and then you have this component right here. So you have p this of x, ln p this of x. Now in this individual formula, if you now bring the p gen out of it, you will bring this p gen dx out of this. And then you have now this integration right here. So you have p this, again, from, let me go a little bit up. So you brought this out along with a negative sign. So you have p this from here. And then you also have this ln from here. And because now you have also extracted a negative sign, this becomes negative. So this will be uh, brought into the denominator of this logarithm. So you have this. Now you note that if you invert this, you will get the KL divergence formula, which is exactly what you need to do. So you take this negative sign, you bring it here, you invert denominator and denominator. This becomes the KL divergence between P this of X. So again, for taking an item X, you will feed it to the discriminator, get the probability distribution over the space of labels, and you have this distribution right here. And then on the right, you have this integration here, which would be the marginal for um, these for the probability distribution over the space of synthetic images over the space of labels. So you have this one. So you kind of want to measure to what extent the image, the, the semantic content of a synthetic image is going to signify a particular label rather than being uniformly associated with everything else. Um, so you give it to here and then you have the KL divergence on this. And because of this right here, you have this expected term as well, which would give you essentially the, um, by definition, it would give you the inception score. It must be noted that inception score has its own limitations. Again, in all of these categories, when you're using inception version three model, you're using a pre-trained model on ImageNet, so it's not necessarily optimal for other data sets. Um, but yeah, this is uh, another measure that you can use in order to assess the quality of a image generator. The other things that you need to consider in the use of FID or inception score is that you have to like insert a lot of images to the inception model so there is the computational complexity associated with that and the fact that you're using uh, the pre-trained model uh, basically comes with its own risks when it comes to adaptability to different domains and different tasks that might have a considerable shift towards like you know away from let's say image net data set but again inception score and FID are uh, very well-known measures in trying to assess the quality of the images generated by a synthetic image generator. And that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching.